Hello everyone, I'm Will from Fracture Sounds and I'm really excited about this one. This is Spotlight Piano, our new Concert Grand Piano Library. Spotlight Piano runs in the free contact player and it's NKS compatible. I think Fracture Sounds is probably best known for our piano libraries, but all of our previous piano libraries have had some kind of special performance technique or they've been prepared with felt or cotton, but this time we wanted to take everything we'd learned from our previous piano libraries and really focus on capturing the, the pure sound of a Concert Grand Piano. So we actually went back to the same hall as Midnight Grand and Glacier Keys, and we sampled the same beautiful Steinway D Concert Grand. So let's dive in now and I'll just show you how it sounds out of the box. So as with many of our previous libraries, we've got this atmosphere layer mixer here, and I'll come on to this a little bit later, but for now I'm just gonna mute these atmosphere layers and focus on the raw layer, which is just the piano on its own. Um, so let's go over to the mic mix tab, and I'll show you these different mic positions. So the default mix is kind of a little bit heavier on the close mics, um, but if we want, we can use this perspective slider and have a more distant sounding mix. So it doesn't sound drenched in reverb because although it's quite a big room, it's it's a controlled ambience. So you just get that sense of depth and distance without it being just covered in reverb. So let's put it more in the middle and see what that sounds like. And then a more close mix. In fact, I'll put it fully to the close mics. And we've actually gone a step further with the close mics because although we've presented it as a single slider for the cl overall close mic, you can actually dive a little bit deeper because um, we've got two different close perspectives. So we've got the, if we, if we move this to custom, then we've got the body perspective and the hammers perspective. And this is just different stereo pairs on the piano that offer quite a different sound depending on uh, how you have this slider. So the body mics, it's a pair of U87s and also a pair of Coles ribbon mics, which are kind of over the soundboard of the piano, which is more of a kind of typical piano miking setup. So this is what that sounds like. And then the, the hammers perspective, it's, as you would expect, it's over the hammers and there's also a pair of mics that are next to the pianist's head. As well as getting kind of a more percussive sound from being close to the hammers, you also get more of a sense of being sat down in front of the piano, which is something that we really wanted to capture. It's got a really sweet high end as well. To me, the benefit of the body mics is that you get a much richer low end. Whereas the, the hammers have that more percussive sound in the high end. So we've also given you this adaptive mode, which brings out the best of both. Uh, so what it's actually doing is gradually moving from the body to the hammers as you go up the keyboard. Um, so down in the low end, you've got that rich low end. And then in the middle, you've got kind of a blend of both. And then we, when you go into the high end, that's just the hammer mics. Um, so obviously this is something that isn't a typical way of controlling the mic mix. And obviously it wouldn't be possible in a live recording, um, but we wanted to offer it 
as an option because I think it, it really brings out the best of those mic positions. But if you don't want to mess around with the body and hammers blend and you just want the default blend that we've given you, then you can just put this slider to default. And this is actually going to save you a bit of RAM and CPU because it'll be purging the separate mics and just giving you this full mix instead. And then we have this time alignment slider. And because there is some natural time delay between the close, mid and far mics, just because it takes longer for the sound to reach the far mics, we've given you this option to align the samples. So basically remove that delay. So by default, it's fully aligned. And this is what it sounds like when they're not aligned. If I just bring these uh, other mics back up. It kind of gives you more separation between the dry and wet sound. So if I align this, it's a lot more of a cohesive, uh, precise sound. It's actually quite a significant difference, isn't it? The natural mode kind of sounds a bit more spacious and the, the aligned is a lot tighter. You can have it in the middle as well if you want kind of a hybrid of the two. And so for now, I'm just going to leave the perspective kind of here, and then I'm going to move on to the atmosphere layers. So similar to our previous library hemisphere, we've actually included quite a few atmosphere layers that you can pick between. And the atmosphere layers are pads and textures that we've designed to blend really well with the dry piano sound. So with these turned up, And like I say, we've got a few that you can switch between. So I'm just going to solo this slot here. So first, let's listen to the lunar layer on its own. Okay, and then the mist layer. And then the flare layer. So this is kind of a reversed granular sound and it's similar to ones that we've included in previous libraries, um, but this is using the, the spotlight piano as the sound source. And this sounds beautiful when you blend it with the raw layer, so. And then let's hear the glint layer. So this is another textural one using granular processing. Um, and then the wisp layer. And then foray. And then shade.
Then again, I'll just pre preview this with the raw piano. This one's actually using processed cello recordings. Uh, so you get this um, kind of string and piano ensemble sound. And then the next one is Aura. And then Ether. This one's a more gritty lo-fi one. It's got some tape processing on it, so um, it's a little bit less uh, less clean and pure than the other ones. And then finally the glow layer. And as I say, these can be loaded in any combination and it'll sound good whichever combination you choose. Um, so let's just try this. Don't know what it's going to sound like, but let's see. And I'm using the mod wheel here to ride the atmosphere layers. So let's check out some of the other controls in the interface. First, we've got the color control, and this is controlling an EQ under the hood that we've dialed in. Um, so you can get a range of tones just by using the single control. Uh, so all the way to the left, you'll get this really uh, warm sound. So let's turn down the atmosphere a bit. And then all the way up, you're going to have a much brighter sound. And then you can kind of dial that anywhere between those two extremes. Okay, and next along we have the timbre shift, which is also controlling the tone of the instrument, but in a different way. Uh, this is actually um, borrowing neighboring samples and retuning them to the original pitch. So if I turn this down, it's actually going to be triggering a higher sample and then tuning it back down. Uh, so you get a darker tone. All the way down. If I turn it up, that's triggering lower samples and tuning them back up, uh, so you get a much brighter sound. So you can make the piano sound completely different using these controls, um, so you do get a lot of flexibility when using this instrument. And next along we have the stereo width control, which is just controlling the stereo width of the raw layer. Um, so you can narrow the stereo spread of just the piano and leave the atmosphere layers fully stereo. Um, so to give you an idea of what that sounds like. Or you can make it wider.
And then down here, we've got the piano noise control. And this is the mechanical noises that the piano makes when you're playing it. Um, so we've got the hammers, which is the sound of you lifting the key. So if we boost this dip to the extreme so you can really hear it. And then next along we have the pedal noise, which is the sound of you pressing and lifting the pedal. So again, we can boost that to the extreme. And next along we have the room tone control, and this is just the sound of the room itself. So. Um, we just left the mics recording with no one in the room, so it's just the sound of the air moving through the room and you get a little bit of rumble, a little bit of microphone hiss as well. Okay, and next we have the reverb. So we've got room, hall, convolution and shimmer. And the, the room is what you're on by default. Uh, and you've got a few controls here. So you've got size. And then damping. So the damping is kind of rolling off the high end. And then the modulation kind of adds that swirling chorusy sound. And then we've also uh, added this fade in control. And this is really useful if you're, if you're having really long reverbs uh, and you want that dreamy tail, but you don't want the attacks of the notes to be cluttered by that reverb, you can add this fade in. And this makes it so that it's only applying the reverb to the tails of the notes. So you're not applying the reverb to the transients, it's fading in that reverb over time. Um, so this is what it sounds like. We're going to re reduce that a little bit to so it's more it's a more of an immediate reverb. So you can hear it. You can hear the reverb, but it's not cluttering the sound of the piano, if you know what I mean. So with that all the way down, you're cluttering those transients. So um, this is really useful if you're having these long, dreamy reverbs, especially on the shimmer mode if we were to go crazy with the, the settings on the shimmer mode and turn the size all the way up. Um, I think this is gonna sound a bit ridiculous with the modulation this high, but. Yeah, I'll turn down the modulation a bit, but you see what I mean. Um, you can get these really luscious, dreamy tails. And then we've also got hall, which is just another mode of algorithmic reverb. And we've also got convolution and we've got a few IRs for you to choose from there. So now let's move on to the response page. And this is where you set up how the instrument responds to the velocity. And we've gone a bit more in depth than we have on previous libraries, because in previous libraries, we've usually just given you one slider, which is the dynamic range. Um, but we've, we've now offered more control. So we've separated the parameters into timbre and volume. So the timbre scaling is to do with the actual sample selection. So it's which velocity sample is going to be triggered. Um, so to show what this is doing, if we drag down the max to about halfway, then when I hit the keyboard as hard as possible, you're going to be triggering a velocity sample that's kind of halfway up. So, so if, you, if you know that you only want to trigger softer dynamics, it just makes it easier to control those soft dynamics because you get the full velocity resolution of your keyboard, but you're only triggering those soft dynamics. And then you can also control the curve. 
either by clicking in the graph or using this arrow at the bottom. And this is useful to uh, kind of tune the library to your MIDI keyboard. So if your MIDI keyboard is uh, weighted and you find it hard to hit those top dynamics without smashing the keys really hard, you can just adjust the curve here so that it's, it's biased towards the louder dynamics. So... Just makes it feel a bit lighter on the touch. And then on the other hand, maybe if you have a, a keyboard with sprung keys, sometimes it's too easy to hit the, the louder dynamics, if you know what I mean. So uh, if you want it to feel like you've got a, a more gentle touch on a sprung keyboard, uh, you can move that curve down and then, then you have to put a bit more effort in to reach those top dynamics. And then the volume scaling is about the actual volume of the playback. So uh, if we bring the min all the way to the top, then when I play softly, you are triggering the soft dynamics, but you're playing them at a volume that's similar to the loud dynamics. So, so when I do that, we're, we're getting the full dynamic range in terms of the samples being triggered, um, but the, the volume is staying approximately the same. So, so it's, it's a similar effect to having compression, but um, you're not compressing the individual notes. You're kind of compressing the samples relative to each other. Um, so that's useful if you if you want a kind of really intimate soft sound. And if you want it to be a, a really high dynamic range, you can put the minimum all the way down and then the softest dynamics will be barely audible. So it's really easy to dial in these settings, but you don't have to touch this page at all if you don't want to. The default settings are perfectly fine for a lot of use cases, um, but this is just if you really want to get in there and tailor this library to your own needs. So next, let's go to the settings page. And these are some more uh, kind of fine tuning settings that you may not need to touch. Um, the default settings, again, will be perfectly fine for a lot of use cases. Um, but there, there are certain things that you might want to tweak um, based on what you want to use the library for. So first of all, we've got sample start, which, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is a really important control to have. And it basically controls the amount of breathing room each sample has. Um, so if we drag it all the way to the top. So although it feels a lot more responsive to play, you do lose some of that realism by trimming really far into the samples. So by giving the sample some breathing room, you can kind of hear the hammer moving or the finger hitting the key before the note actually sounds. We've also shown you the amount of latency that is caused by the sample start setting. So you can use that to compensate in your, um, in your door using the negative track delay. So the default setting has 40 milliseconds of latency, which personally I don't find to be a problem when I'm playing, but if you are quite sensitive to latency when you're playing, you can turn it up all the way, and then when you've finished recording, then you turn it back down, and then that gives you the best of both worlds. You get the real responsiveness while you're performing, and then you get the most realistic sound when you're playing back. And below that, we've got the advanced resonance toggle, and this is to do with the sympathetic resonance caused by the sustain pedal, and the reason we have the advanced uh, option is that we sampled it in a more sophisticated way than normal. The standard way to sample pedal resonance is to sample the whole keyboard with the pedal up and then the whole keyboard with the pedal down. Um, and that gives you the sympathetic resonance when you press the pedal and then play something. But the problem is when you play some notes with a pedal up and then subsequently press the pedal, it won't fade in the resonance. But the way we sampled it is that we as well as getting the, the full pedal down and pedal up, we also isolated the pedal resonance and we have that as a separate layer. So when you do play a pedal up note and then press the pedal, it's gonna fade in this resonance separately. So this does add voice count because um, you've, we've got these extra layers that are playing all the time. So if you want to save some resources, you can turn that off, um, but it will give you a slightly less realistic sympathetic resonance response. And then next we have the force pedal down samples and as you'd expect, this is making it so that it's always gonna play the pedal down samples, even when the pedal's up. So you're gonna get a rich and resonant sound, 
even with a pedal up. And it also means you'll save some RAM as well because it's going to purge the pedal up samples. And below that, we have what we've called the clarity filter. And what this is, is a high pass filter um, that's dynamically applied across the keyboard. And it means that the, the higher notes are going to have more of the low end removed um, to reduce some of that thump and rumble from the higher keys. So if I turn that off, the higher keys, there is some of that thump from the, the kind of mechanical sounds. Uh, and that might be desirable. Uh, so turn that off if you if you want it to sound um, like you're right up to the piano. Um, but if you want it a bit more of a controlled low end when you're playing higher up, you can turn it on. The reason we have it as uh, a filter inside contact and dynamically applied to the keys is that when it's turned on, it's not going to affect the low notes at all. So you're still going to get that rich bottom end. but then the higher keys will have that filtering. Um, so it's a bit more sophisticated than just slapping on a high pass filter after the instrument. And then next we have the atmosphere decay mode, and this is controlling how the atmosphere layers decay over time. So do you want the atmosphere layers to decay alongside the piano, or do you want them to sustain infinitely? And then we have the room tone mode, which is controlling how the room tone is triggered. So if we just um, turn up the room tone, then when it's always on, it'll play straight away and it'll always be playing. And then if you set it to host transport, that's going to only play when you've pressed play in your project. So when, when your project isn't playing, you're not going to hear any of the background noise. So that's pretty much it in terms of the interface. Um, now I'm just going to show you some of the presets that we've included. Um, so if you don't want to mess around with the user interface and you just want really useful sounds out of the box, these presets are great for that. I'm just gonna cover a few of the presets in this video, and then there'll be a separate video with someone better at piano than me showing you every single preset. Um, so you can hear all of the content that the library has. Um, but for now, let's just go through a few of these. So let's go for bright. And then we've got this one called Faux Felt, which is supposed to sound a bit more like a felt piano. And then let's see this one, Great Plateau. Let's see, Intimate which is going to be um, quite a dry and soft and emotive sound. And then Let's try recital. This one kind of sounds like you're kind of in, in the back of a room listening to a performance. And then Rose Petals. This is another of my favorites, inspired by a certain Thomas Newman score. And then we've also got a folder of textures, and these are making use of the atmosphere layers without the dry piano. So you can use these as kind of pads and textures on their own. 
Um, so let's just pick a few of these. Let's try Dream Sequence. Lost Pianos. Through the Veil. So thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoy using Spotlight Piano. Uh, it's a library that I'm really excited to finally be able to share. We've been working on it for about a year now, and I really feel like it's um, a combination of everything we've learned from the previous piano libraries we've done. Um, so I really hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. So that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.